Okay, so in this video we'll be looking at the SEC 2018 Higher Level Maths Paper 2, Question 9, and that's Leaving Cert as well. So if you're Junior Cert, you can very much ignore this video. So, in engineering, a crank and slider mechanism can be used to change circular motion into motion back and forth in a straight line. In the diagram below, crank OD rotates about the fixed point O. The point C slides back and forth in a horizontal line. CD is the rod that connects C to the crank. The diagram below shows three of the possible positions for C and D. Okay, so again, to note what actually is happening here and what it looks like, if I can just add a circle in here um, and a line here and one more a blue line here. As the red line increases in length, or not increases in length, as the red line rotates, it drags the blue line with it. Okay, so if the red line comes around to here, the blue line gets rotated around as well. But the blue line stays fixed in length. Oh no, not that. The blue line stays fixed at that length, but cannot stretch that far, so it has to be slid forward. As red comes around even further, the blue line gets slid even further forward. Okay, so as you can see here, as the red line rotates, the blue line would move forward and C actually gets dragged closer to the circle. That's the main idea of the video then, or of the question. So in the diagram below, a particular position of the mechanism uh, is shown with DCO being 15. We want to find the angle COD, so from C to O to D. We want to find that angle right there. How do we go and do that? Well, as I say to my students, there are two types of triangles. There are right angled and non right angled. If you go to your log tables and look at page 13, you'll see that there are non right angle triangles and right angle triangles. If it's a right angle triangle, you only use this these rules. If it's a non-right angle triangle, you only use these rules. So we can either use the area, the sine rule, or the cosine rule for this question. So looking at it, is it a right angle triangle? No, it is not. So the only rules that we can use are going to be the area, the sine rule, or the cosine rule. Now, are we going to use the area? No, because the question doesn't reference area at all. There's no talk of area. So we're either going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. I tell my students that by default, check the sine rule first. And how you check can you use the sine rule is, do you have a pair? And what I mean by pair is, do you have a side and its opposite angle? If you have a side and its opposite angle, chances are you're going to use the sine rule. Okay. So we're going to use the sine rule and always write what you're looking for first. So the sine rule could be written as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. But we're looking for the angle, so we'd write it as sine A over A is equal to sine B over B. Okay. So it's going to be the sine of theta the sine of theta over its opposite side is equal to the sine of 15 over its opposite side. I've multiplied both sides by 30. By 30, and it appears here. I get a decimal as my answer, and then I take the sine inverse of it. Now, the question does not say that there are multiple answers. There's no reference of plural. If there was reference of plural, you would have to check with the unit circle, all, sine, tan, cos. What quadrants are sine positive in? Sine is positive in the first and in the second quadrant here. So you'd want to be 
very careful in reading the question. You might want to find this angle. Now this is smaller than 180 degrees, this brown one. So it's going to be 180 degrees minus, you might be able to spot that this angle here is the same as the blue angle there. So it's going to be minus whatever that worked out to be. So it'll be minus 51 degrees and theta works out to be 129 degrees. But as I said, there's no reference to this in the question, plural or multiple. So you don't actually do that brown bit for this question. But there are some questions that you would be expected to do that. So I've gone and deleted the brown section there because we didn't need it for the question, but I do want to raise it with you. Okay. The next question, find the period and the range of C. So how the range, the range is the closest and the furthest C will get to the circle, okay? Because I think that gives a diagram. Yeah, this is a bit better. The range of C to X, this length here. What's the maximum length this could be? Would be 30 if D was all the way down here. If D was here, C would be out here, and it would be the full length uh, D to C. Okay, so the range, the maximum value is 30. And we want to find the minimum value as well. Well, what if D was all the way around here? And this DC can only be 30 long. So this is 30. How long would this section here be? Well, the diameter of the circle is 20, so this is going to be 10, and that explains the range there. What about the period? So it's referring to the period of, whoops, referring to the period of alpha. What does, uh, what angle does alpha go through? What angle does alpha go through before coming back to where it started? What is the size of this angle? It's 360 degrees. We're going to write it in radians, so that's 2 pi radians. Let's include radians. Okay, the next question then asks us to complete the table for the length, uh, the length CX. No, it's not the length CX, it's the length CD. Is it sorry? I need to read the question. Complete the table below for f of a. Now what is f of a? f of a is the length from here to here. So if theta were zero or alpha was zero and it was flat line here, d to o was a flat line, the length would be 30. What would the scenario look like if it was if it were 90 degrees, it would look something like this. But the mistake that most people make is that they find this full length y, okay, which would be if it were moved in here. This is what the triangle I've drawn out looks like. They find this full length y, and they forget to subtract this distance here, because we only want this distance here. Yeah. We only want that distance there. So most people will get the answer 28.8 when they should really get, so 28.8 is the answer here, 28.28 even. But the actual answer that fits in here is 10 less than that because you want to subtract the length of the radius. So the actual answer is 18.28, okay? That fits in here. How do I know 180 degrees is 10? But imagine what D looks like when it's all the way around here. How far is it from here to here if this is only allowed to be 30 long? It's going to be 30 minus the diameter, and that's where you get 10. The same scenario happens at 270 as happens at 90. The triangle is just downwards, but it's the same triangle. So you'd find Y again and then subtract that radius there. And the last one, 360, is when it looks like this, when D is all the way around here. 
at 360 degrees. So D is actually effectively brought down, and how long would this line be then? It would be the length C to D. Okay, so that's why it's it's 30 for there. Now, drawing a table for this, you're not drawing a table, drawing a graph for this is the next section. Okay, it says only between zero and 360 degrees. I know at the start, it was at 30, and at the end, it was at 30. Halfway through this, it was 180 degrees. It was it's at its closest distance, which was 10. Then we need to worry about uh, when is it at it's 90 degrees. We're going to get, what did it work out to be? 18.28 when it's at 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, 18.28, and it does say just a rough sketch, and then connect them up, making sure that we're drawing somewhat a curve in. You do not want to draw something like this. That looks bad. Okay, so making it a curve as much as possible. They're really trying to get you to draw a cost curve. That's the most important thing, that it starts at its max distance away. Okay, next question then. Uh, referring to diagram one, two, and three near the start of the question, for which of the three pos positions of the mechanism will a one degree change in alpha cause the greatest change in position of C? Explain your answer. So going back to the start of the question, this was when alpha was zero, alpha was oh, 70 degrees, or alpha was roughly 180, 210 degrees. So seven degrees, 210 degrees. And what it's referring to is the rate of change here. So at zero, one degree, we're looking at the, the angle or the slope of the lines that are formed. 70 degrees is roughly speaking here. And 210 degrees, roughly speaking here, okay? So the slopes at somewhere around there, 70 degrees is somewhere around there. The change in one degree is much greater here because the slope is steeper. Okay, so you're looking at position B, position B, the tangent to the curve is large at this point, at this time, I suppose. You're really making some reference to the tangent to the curve. Okay, going on to the last part of the question then. The diagram below shows another crank and slider mechanism with different dimensions. Okay, so what do we want to find? We want to find the length of OR. So what kind of triangle is it? It's a non-right angle triangle, so the only rules I can use are these for non-right angle triangle. Do I know a pair? Do I know that angle and that side? No. Do I know this angle and that side? No. Do I know that angle and that side? No. So you're probably going to use the cosine rule. With the cosine rule, it's really important that the, the side that's on its own should be opposite the angle that you know. So the only angle that I know in this question is 10. So if this ends up being 10, this has to be opposite. So this has to be OR. So OR is going in here. B is my side 36. And then this side here of the big triangle is 31 plus OR. Minus 2BC, which is that 31 plus OR, cost 10. Take a second, look at that. How many unknowns are there? There's only one unknown and one equation. One unknown and one equation you should be pretty happy with. You should be able to solve that. So take your time multiplying it out. 36, squares, 36 squared is 1,296. Take your time, multiply out that bracket carefully. 
the 2 into the 36, but make sure you leave the minus on the outside. Cost then, getting decimalized, multiplying the 72 into this bracket, leaving the minus on the outside. Okay. Um, or squared on both sides, cancels. Subtract or squared from both sides. You get a zero over here. Now there's only one, still only one unknown, but it's not a quadratic, it's a linear, which is fantastic. Then you're grouping like terms. So grouping the ors together. And then it says find or to the closest centimeter. So rounding it to seven centimeters. Okay. Not the hardest of questions in the world, but people still struggle with it. So let's have a look through the marking scheme. So only 40 marks going for the question. And 10 of them are going for just using the sign rule. It's a lot of marks for just using the sign rule. Uh, five marks for getting the period. So two of the five for getting the period or the range. Most people got the range and struggled with the period that it's referring to the angle only. Filling in the table. Five marks going for filling in the table. Most people, again, as I said, will get the 18.28 wrong and put in the 28.28. Graph, 10 marks going for that. Okay, Three points from the table plotted for seven marks. It's an awful lot of marks. Um, and finally, um, cosine rule and the interpretation of the graph. The interpretation of the graph, I'd say a lot of people struggle with the interpretation of the graph. And using the cosine rule, five marks again at the end. It's quite nice. There is an alternative method. If you want to pause it and take a look at the alternative method. Sorry, that's not the alternative method. Oh, it is, sorry. Alternative method um, for the last part of the question. Okay, hopefully the question is useful for you. Uh, and probably worthwhile having a look at some of the other trig graph questions because they are quite common.